Hey everyone, Keegan and Riley with Dark Arrow. In today's video, we're gonna be talking about the Dark Arrow One landing gear and some of the details on how we came up with the design. Let's start by taking a look at the computer model in the Onshape CAD environment. So here it is. We really haven't talked much about the overall landing gear design architecture, so let's go over that first. Right away, you can see it's a tricycle configuration with a smaller nose gear in the front of the airplane and two larger main gears further in the back of the fuselage. The main gear sits just behind the aircraft center of gravity and carries roughly 80 to 85% of the aircraft weight. And the nose gear carries the remaining 15 to 20% of the weight. That difference in weight distribution essentially drives the size of your tire and wheel. The nose gear carries less weight, so it's a smaller uh, tire and wheel and then your main gear carries a little bit more so it's bigger and both of those are going to retract into the belly of the fuselage so both the nose gear and the main gear. Main gear retracts back into the belly here and the nose gear retracts back right here. The big advantage with using retractable gear is you get a reduction in drag since the wheels and gear struts aren't hanging out in the breeze. Since the mission of the Dark Arrow 1 is high speed efficient long range flight, reducing the drag by using retractable gear helps us achieve the desired performance. The reduction in drag to increase the performance does come with a penalty though. Traditionally, retractable landing gear is a bit more complicated and heavier over fixed gear. So there's a lot of engineering effort that we went through to bring that weight down. I'll go into some more of those details in a minute, but first I wanna talk about more of the background on how we arrived at this configuration. So I'm actually gonna hand it off to Riley to go into more about that. So we'll back up to the beginning of when we started designing the Dark Arrow 1. The first thing we did was a bunch of research. We spent a lot of time at AirVenture crawling on our hands and knees under different airplanes, looking at different landing gear designs and inspecting them, taking dimensions and notes and getting ideas. The two main configurations you see in small airplanes like ours are tricycle and tail dragger. And between those two options, you see fixed gear and retractable gear. We already knew we wanted to go down the route of a retractable gear design for the speed advantages. So then the decision just came down to tricycle gear versus tail dragger. We wanted the Dark Air 1 to have some high speed capability, but we also wanted it to have long range. To achieve long range, we were gonna need a really large fuel tank. A great place to store a lot of fuel is in the wing. So we wanted to preserve as much volume as possible in the wing for fuel. And that meant we weren't gonna be able to mount the gear anywhere on the wing. There's another advantage of keeping your gear off the wing and that's drag reduction. If you have gear mounted on your wing and gear doors, uh, the gear doors can trip up laminar flow on the lower wing skin and increase drag. So we decided we were going to mount the gear on the fuselage and retract the gear onto the fuselage. So now that we know we were going to put the gear on the fuselage, we pick between tricycle gear and tail dragger. If we we're going to try to do tail dragger, it'd be really difficult to retract them into the fuselage. There are some examples of this configuration, like the Grumman Wildcat back during World War II, but for our setup, uh, mounting the gear on the fuselage and doing a tail dragger retracted into the fuselage just wouldn't have worked. There's no room for the gear to go. So that left us with a tricycle gear configuration. Luckily, there's some nice advantages that tricycle gear offer over tail dragger configurations. And tricycle gear are basically what you see on modern aircraft. As a starting point on our own design, we looked at examples from other aircraft that have gear retracting into the fuselage. The common arrangement you see here is just a strut with the wheel mounted on the end and this assembly folds back into the fuselage after the cabin. Some really popular examples of this are the Cessna RG models and the Lance Air 4. There are lots of examples of this configuration and we initially drew inspiration from these designs and had our own similar design worked up. One thing we didn't like about some of these strut configurations was the way they behave like a spring and allow the aircraft to bounce on the runway. They don't dissipate energy. The best way to dissipate energy on landing is with proper suspension and damping, like an air shock. We wanted to incorporate something like this into our gear design. I'll hand it back off to Keegan and he can explain our suspension solution as well as the rest of the main gear strut design. The main gear design we are using is called an articulating or trailing link and it is built to incorporate an off-the-shelf shock for suspension. The landing loads deflect this arm up and the impact energy gets transferred into the shock to absorb and dissipate energy rather than returning the energy and allowing the airplane to bounce. So this is the shock that we're using for the main gear. It's an air shock. When this piston gets compressed, it's actually compressing a chamber of nitrogen. That's what's absorbing the energy from your landing impact. 
And to prevent the shock from springing straight back, you've got oil and a series of orifices, and that oil gets forced through those uh, orifices to prevent it from just plunging straight back. So that's our shock. One thing we really like about our suspension is the articulating link arrangement and its ability to absorb bumps that you may encounter in the runway. So to better demonstrate this, we've actually drawn this up on our whiteboard. And we have on the left here, our articulating link arrangement, which is what the Dark Arrow One has. We have that compared to a telescopic gear, which you may have seen on many other aircraft. Let's pretend we're gonna hit a bump here with our two different suspension systems and see what that feels like from a pilot perspective. So um, for this suspension system on the left with our articulating link, when you hit that bump, you're gonna have a drag component that goes back and then a vertical component that points up and that's gonna result in a component force, which is your ground load that's gonna look approximately like this. Since your gear is able to articulate down here, your wheel is gonna move up and back. From a pilot perspective, you're not going to feel that bump as much when you compare that to a telescopic gear. So what you have going on over here, the suspension is only able to move vertically up and down. It's not able to articulate backwards. So that results in a reaction load at your strut itself, and that has to counter that uh, as we have shown here, and that load is going to go up into your airframe. So from a pilot perspective, you're actually going to feel that a little bit more. In addition to the cushier ride that you're gonna experience as a pilot, the articulating trailing link design is actually really good at absorbing hard landings. In fact, we designed it to meet all the different requirements specified under FAR Part 23 for certified aircraft. There are a lot of other different requirements that we needed to meet as well. Let's talk about some of those. The gear had to be lightweight, which has been a constant overarching requirement in every aspect of the Dark Air One design. We also wanted them to be easily manufacturable. This meant no custom forged gear struts like you see on a lot of these designs with struts that retract into the fuselage. We instead are going to utilize a composite strut, which is really straightforward for us to build. The rest of the parts are CNC machined or turned on a lathe or are just off the shelf hardware. We also needed the manufacturing to be scalable so that we can make a bunch of them easily when we get into production. Another requirement of our gear, Sorry. another requirement of our gear is it had to be easily serviceable. That's a nice thing about this arrangement. It's really simple from a service perspective. So if you have any issues with your shock, like say your seals wear out, or you want to change out the dampening in your shock by switching out the orifices, you can just switch out this entire shock. This is an off the shelf part. There's nothing custom here. So this is readily available. Compare that to the landing gear in my Cozy, which is retractable. This has the shock integrated with the gear strut. Uh, if anything wears out on this, I have to take out the entire gear to service this. So let's hope nothing breaks on this. Another requirement that is aligned with the serviceability is the gear needs to be builder friendly. We want it to be easy to assemble and install in the airframe. Our gear won't require any special tools for the builder beyond what they are already using to build the rest of the Dark Arrow 1. The last thing we will touch on are the wheels and brakes that are mounted on the trailing link. They are made by Behringer. We are using five by five rims which is a really common size on light aircraft and paired with the rims are Michelin Air tubeless tires. The brakes we selected are the high energy version and they have a lot of stopping power. This is really important for stopping in a short distance or if you have a rejected takeoff and you're running out of runway to stop. The entire wheel and brake assembly is really lightweight. These are the wheels and brakes we will be specifying to be used on all Dark Arrow One kits. So that's a high level overview of the landing gear on the Dark Arrow One. As you can see, we already have a couple key pieces of hardware for the gear, but up next, we're gonna be moving into manufacturing the remaining gear components, and we're excited to share that progress with you. If you wanna follow along as we build the gear or see the rest of the progress on the Dark Arrow One prototype, be sure to subscribe. It helps us out and it helps you out too because you get to see when we release our latest videos. Other than that, thanks for watching. We'll catch you in the next video. Welcome to MTV Cribs. Uh, this is my my current crib. Um, if you can't tell, this is uh, landing gear to a uh, C5. Um, if you go over here, this is uh, our porch area, and then uh, outside, uh, you can see just how big this big boy is. Um, but yeah, that's what the front door looks like and then I uh, enter through the porch here um, This is bedroom one here. 
king size bed. Uh, then you go over here to the um, kitchen area. And uh, the playroom is up there.